let's take a closer look at the S1. All right, so yeah, the printer looks quite nice on the table here. It's not too large, it's a medium format, but it is a little bit larger than like an Ender 3. So let's start here on top. We got the spool holder and you guys saw how it mounted, quite simple, it just comes right off and clips on. We got the filament detector. We got brass inserts for wear protection. All of our channels are smooth here on the front. Very nice and clean. Flipping around to the back, we can see we got dual Z axis lead screws and they are tethered with this belt and you can just tug on this belt to go up and down. Here you guys can see where the wire goes to the filament detector and it's routed down this channel all the way to the bottom and then plugs into this junction. The supports on the top are plastic but they do have bearings there and going down all of this is a metal. Same thing on this side and you guys can see where the wire clip clipped in. Pretty simple. Very nice and clean design. This is our x-axis motor and we plugged it in here on the bottom and also the x-axis switch on the bottom there. So two z-axis motors, one on each side with the coupler. The motors do kind of float from the bottom. They are connected with a plastic bracket to the channel. Here we can see the back of the hot end a little better and this is the roller we adjusted with the eccentric nut being underneath here and you can guys see the fan blowing underneath the nozzle there, the heat block, silicone over it and also our CR touch over there. Going down we can see our y-axis channel and this is the mounting here. Y-axis motor with the in-stop switch and to this side we can see the junction where we plugged everything in with our motor and the filament detection and on the other side we have the manufacturing label which tells us the model number the build size 220 by 220 by 270 we also have a QR code here it says Creality Cloud and down from the label we got the on and off switch the power input port it is fused and from the back here we got a cable that comes out to the bed and it's very strain relieved feels heavy duty and looking at the very back you guys can see here we have a sticker that shows us the power voltage selector so you guys probably can't see very well but we are on 230 right Right now we need to go to 115. I'm gonna go ahead and peel this thing and we're gonna grab the little screwdriver that comes with the printer. Yeah we're just gonna to toggle it to the other side and that's gonna give us the 115 voltage. We're going back to the front. We've got a cap here, the wire here that routes to our hot end assembly and on this side we got the adjuster for the X. So on the hot end we can see how the cable comes in. It clips in right here and it's strained relieved. We have an arm here that releases the tension on the extruder. There's a little brass fitting in there and also this is a gear that turns as it extrudes. Also a good little indicator to look at when it's flowing. On this side here you guys can see where we put our one, two, three, four bolts to hold it to the bracket. That's the heat break there. This is the motor for the extruder. And it's got a little Ender logo on the front of it. Our parts cooling fan does have a nice little metal shroud around it. And on this side, we got the CR Touch with the probe. And all the way over here, we have the heat brake fan. So looking underneath, you guys can see what it kind of looks like here. Pretty nice. Got the duct coming and blowing underneath the nozzle. And by the way, this is our X in stop switch for the hot end. So going down from there, we have the bill plate, which is this magnetic steel sheet, which is a PE surface. And this works very well, as this is the same one used in the Ender 3 version 2 Neo. So I really love these because they're easy to pull off. So once you're done printing, you can flex it, pop the print off and start printing something else. And there's a magnetic mat underneath that. And as we saw earlier, this is 220 by 220 and 270 tall of print volume. And we do have two tabs on each side to pull it up. So underneath all that, we have the aluminum heated bed part. And you guys can see underneath that it's not insulated, which is not a big deal for this size. We can see the frame is nice and thick. We got orange springs with large adjustable knobs for adjusting the bed level. The whole base of the printer is very nice and clean. Here we have our Y belt with the adjuster and these little bolts I was talking about where you can kind of move this thing to adjust where the belt can line up on the pulley and this is our tensioner. You guys can see we have this nice kind of a plastic bluey gray look, some bolts here. This is our full size SD card port and then we've got a USB type C port for connecting. So going from there, we can see here we have a pull out storage cubby and this thing is huge guys. If you can see how big that is. And yeah, I put pretty much all of the things from this printer in here and it can more than easily fit all of it. And yeah, very nice addition to this printer and integrated seamlessly here into the style. And then going to the side here, we have our screen with this rotary knob and that's how you can control it. There is a protector here with also a sticker reminding you to change your voltage in the back. So definitely don't forget to do this as you can damage the printer if you don't check it. So if you live in the United States, you will be on 115 and different parts of the world is like Europe is mostly 230. So yeah, make sure you do that. So let's go ahead and peel this off. 
We got a little glue here stuck from the sticker, I guess. I do like these screens overall, and they're really easy to operate. I wish Creality would go to something a little more slimmer, as these bezels here are starting to look dated. But yeah, from here we pretty much got just a clean side, and not much on this side either. So yeah, everything looks quite good and very well built. So for the next part, let's go ahead and home the printer, make sure all the motors and switches work, and also we'll preheat it and level the bed. All right, so I got the printer plugged in in the back. Let's go ahead and power it on. And it's booting up, and there it goes. And we can see the UI looks really nice. Let's go ahead and go to prepare, auto home. We'll make sure all of our motors and switches work. So there we have the X, the Y, and the Z. It's gonna use the CR touch. All right, so it's all good there. Let's go ahead and preheat PLA. And it starts to preheat, and we can see down here our temperatures are going up on the nozzle and the bed. Parts cooling fan is kind of making some rubbing sounds and being a little loud. And it seems to be going away as it keeps running. But yeah, everything seems to be working, which is a great sign. So this is the usual Creality UI. It's quite simple. You use the rotary knob to navigate and then click on it. So this is print. It's going to read the SD card. And then the prepare has our move, disable steppers, out of home, Z axis offset, preheat ABS, cool down. So it looks like our Z axis offset has been set to minus 2.33, so that's interesting. Also, we got control here for temperature, motion, store configuration, reconfiguration, and reset config. So, and we got info about the printer. So yeah, pretty basic, usual Creality UI. And more importantly here, we have the level button. And so we don't want to click this yet, as this activates the out of bed leveling with the CR touch where it probes the bed. First thing you want to do before you do that is go to prepare and click on move. And on the Z axis, we want to go all the way down to zero. So after doing that, we can go ahead and manual level the bed. So even though this is automatic bed leveling with the CR touch, you want to set your bed manually with these knobs. Now, if your bed looks really close and, and you don't want to do this part, I guess you could skip it, but you definitely want to do this because the flatter the build plate is, the less offset the probe has to make and the better chance you're going to have a more even layer adhesion on your first layer. So actually all our motors are locked and we need to unlock them. And if we go to prepare, there's disable steppers. And now we can move around. Now be very careful on pushing this down as you'll knock off the Z axis. So let's go ahead and push this this way and we'll go to this corner first. And I'm just going to use a posty note. And so we're just going to adjust the four corners on the build plate. So mine is actually pre-adjusted quite well. So they seem to get this one out the door pretty close to ready to go. So. So on this, you don't have to be perfect as long as it's pretty close as the CR touch is going to compensate for anything in between. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and click on level. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna probe the bed and take the offsets and save them into the memory. And as you guys can see, it double taps and there's four points. So four times four, 16 total. Well, actually guys, I'm actually noticing there's three taps. One, two, three, wow. And as simple as that, our bed leveling is done. So the next thing we wanna do is go to prepare and then go to Z axis offset and we're gonna measure here and set our offset. So we're at minus 2.33 and looks like I need to go down just a little bit more. There we go. So that feels about right. And we ended up being at minus 2.80. So yeah, now that we're done with that, I think we're cooling off again. Let's go ahead and preheat PLA. I'm gonna disable stepper so I can raise this thing up a bit. Well, then let's go ahead and put some filament in and I got this Creality branded PLA mat. Green color, very nice. So let's go ahead and cut it on an angle so it's easier to feed. And we're gonna put it here on the spool holder run it through our filament detector. And by the way, there's a little light here, a blue one that glows when it's detecting. And then we're gonna go down into the extruder and we're gonna push on the release arm to insert the filament into the teeth of the extruder. So since this is a direct drive, this is very simple and it's nice how it just comes down from the top. So let's go ahead and purge it through. And you guys can see we got the green coming out the bottom. All right. So at this point, we're pretty much ready to print. So let's go back 
I do need to grab our SD card, and it is at eight gig. Plugs right here. I love that it's a full size. Okay, yeah, so plugs in upside down. And let's see if we have any test files in there. We're gonna click on print, and sure enough, we have a couple G codes. Well, actually, quite a few of them. So we got shake hands, rabbit, handle, cat, and another file there. But I think I know what the rabbit is, so let's just start with the rabbit. And this color is kind of nice for that anyways. So we'll click on that and we get our printing menu. So once it starts printing, we're going to take a closer look at the options we have here. All right. And I'm going to click on tune and go to Z-axis offset just in case we need to go up or down while it's printing. All right, so it's purging on the side. And so far, our offset looks perfect. And there it goes. All right, guys, so yeah, first try there, and everything works as expected. So yeah, it seems like Creality never fails. I'm just working right out of the box, at least for me here, so. All right, so hopefully you guys can see that, but yeah. Here looking at the printing menu, it says printing on top, our file name, which is rabbit, the progress bar with the percentage, 2%, printing time and remaining, and then we got tune, pause and stop. And down here we have all of our information that's constantly there, which is the hot end temperature, the bed temperature, the speed, the flow rate, the fan, and the Z axis offset. And on the very bottom, we got coordinates of the X, Y, and Z. So clicking on tune, we can adjust our printing speed, nozzle temperature, bed temperature, fan speed, and the Z axis offset. Then we got a pause and stop button if you want to cancel the print. And that's pretty much it. Pretty simple and straightforward. All right, so we are printing and so far everything's looking really good.